Polo Madridistas and Athletic Club supporters for the preview of the upcoming top of the table clash in La Liga at the Bernabeu coming soon. And it's ju it just happens uh, right before each of the teams gear up to go to their respective cup competitions, you know. For Athletic Club, it's uh, the Copa del Rey final. For us, it's the show showdown at uh, Bernabeu against Man City. Uh, so, but before we get into all of that, uh, today's episode is actually sponsored by Manscaped, the pioneers in male grooming and all things nice for men. So if you're looking to invest in a quality pair of nail clippers, nose trimmers, or ball shavers, look no further than manscaped.com. It's a great way to help our channel and support us. So if you use the code LBR20 at checkout, you get 20% off and free shipping. That's LBR20 at manscaped.com. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, and joining me today uh, is, you know, for this preview is uh, the bread and butter of this channel, Farooq. And we have a very special guest, Itore, from the Pentland, Pentland Club based in London. Uh, it's the biggest penia for athletic club outside of Spain, uh, I believe. So let's go with you first, Itore. How are you doing? Um, and what were you up to? Uh, fine, fine. This is, this is my third um, uh, calling from London. Um, really looking forward to the game on Sunday, but uh, mainly the focus for all the athletic supporters is the, is the game that we have uh, the following week, which is the um final of the Copa del Rey against Mallorca on Saturday absolutely and uh, did you expect to actually get to the final I know athletic club are all, always there they always do well the Copa del Rey but in the final where yeah, none well, of the bigger teams are there been, yeah yeah so we've, we've been to three finals in the last five years so it is it is not a uh, surprise to get to the final on the way to the final the biggest thing we've beaten is um uh, Atletico Madrid and Barcelona um but yeah so for us the final the cup is is uh, it has got some some specific importance and uh, we're, we're, a, we're a club that we run on on our philosophy and on our heart and for us this competition is, is the one that we really really want to win obviously Champions League will be very welcome uh, La Liga will be very welcome but I don't think we'll do much better than finish fourth um but yeah, so looking forward to it. Um, yeah, we'll see you. Absolutely. And how about you, Farouk? Uh, how did the international break go for you? Did you watch any of the games? Or were you just chilling in Arizona? Yeah, man, I didn't watch any of the games, honestly. But I caught some highlights, you know, uh, here and there. Actually, the, 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 the time difference, and it's actually been a shock for me. Like, you know, it's been a week plus, and I still am not used to the shitty time different thing but yeah man it's, it's it's been quite interesting you know seeing different things talking to different people and it was good that it was at the international break so it kind of like you know merged together with the break like yeah it's international football like who really cares about that you know like yeah we're back to our bread and butter for the you know the, the weekly events so where, where are you Farouk where are you based uh, actually I'm based in Milan but right now I'm in Arizona ah, okay hmm. that's place to go nice and hot yeah <laughs> An awful weather in London this week. Awful, um, very windy and rainy. Uh, I, I can imagine. Actually, no, normally, so like I'm in Tucson in Arizona, and normally, like it's the middle of a desert. You know, uh, it's usually quite hot, but like unfortunately, the time I come, it starts to get rainy and cold. You know, like and you are basically unable to do a lot of shit. So yeah, it is what it is. Unfortunately. Nice guys. Uh, nice talking about the weather, but yeah, uh, it's always shitty and hot in India. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, anyways, uh, let's uh, let's get into the preview, I guess. Uh, but before we do that, um, Itori, like uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, like you were there from the start. You're one of the senior members at the Pentland Club. Uh, so yeah, I'm one of the yeah founding members. Um, yeah, he was uh, a good friend who you know. His name is Gaiska in Basco, Salvador in, in uh, Spanish. Um, he's um, sort of a Mexican from um, Basque descent. And we, uh, he and myself and some of the um, a bunch of people started the club about 10 years ago. And um, it's gone from strength to strength. Um, so loads of uh, Basque people live in Bilbao to work or studying or passing by. And um, it wasn't difficult to, to find a few um supporters uh expats from bilbao living here but then we we noticed that the 
people, English people that really love football. Um, we attracted them in a very special way. Um, I don't know why. Some people that had never seen the team before, had never been to the city before, uh, that um, suddenly they became athletic fans. And sort of recently, we 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 had some communication from someone from Korea and Japan, all over the world. Um, I think that the unique selling point of athletic is that they have always played with local players. And, and that has got some sentiment, so something that people will say, oh, how can you manage, you know, in this, uh, nowadays, in these multi-million pound signings um, or multi-million dollar signings of, of uh, uh, players all over the world, and you have managed to stay loyal to your philosophy of having local players and still never been relegated, and, and that's the case. Uh, we are the only team together with Real Madrid and Barcelona who always played in the top division, and we'll hopefully uh, we'll keep the same for the next uh, 125 years. By the way, this year is our 125th anniversary of, of the club since it was founded in 19, uh, 1898. Well, I'm sure that's going to be a lot of celebrations over at the Peña. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. Like, like you said, initially uh, I thought it was just Basque people or people who sp spoke Basque of initially from the region who are uh, who get to be part of your Peña. And but then looks like uh, anyone can join, even if yeah, I were to walk in. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's true. So we are an open bunch. Um, so um, in principle, it's just people who have got some kind of affinity towards the club, supporters. Um, but we, we never thought that it would attract so many British people into to the Peña. And we, we've got, um, you know, we've got a, a WhatsApp group and start with all the communications were in Spanish. But nowadays, uh, a good a good um, amount of people are, don't speak any Spanish from the Peña, so we have to communicate in English so everybody understands. Absolutely. Yeah, we keep uh, getting new members all the time, and new and more hits in sort of like uh, all the social media and stuff. So, yeah, very pleased with how it's going. Absolutely, man. And you mentioned uh, you were part of two Peña, so the second Peña is one that's for all. Uh, yeah, the, the second Peña, um, yeah, it was called uh, AMZ, which is the initials for Athletic Mundo and Sear in Basque, which means uh, in, in English, Athletic across the world. And sort of we, we, we formed that Peña back in the days where internet didn't exist, so difficult, now they still need policy to do it, but, but difficult in those days. And then the Peña was the Peña was official when we started, but um, it's, it's not, it wasn't easy at the time to just collect um, the subs and and to get everybody um, together. But um, yeah, it's, it's restarting again, that one. So yeah, hello to them if you are watching, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, hopefully the, uh, your people will, will also be here in the chat. So, uh, yeah, man. Uh, but the next topic uh, that you actually wanted to discuss with us uh, was the history of the names of both both of our clubs. Uh, I, uh, okay. You thought it like take it away. Uh, tell us about. Okay, how so athletic so um, was born. right. So um, athletic um, is. Um, started as I said um, back in 18 um, in 1990. Uh, there was there was um, two different clubs. Uh, um, it was uh, Athletic Club and then Bilbao Football Club. Uh, only a few years later, they um, they united one single name, calling Athletic Club. Uh, then, as you probably know, we had a um, fascist dictatorship in Spain um, from uh, 1936 till 1977 and um, we had a guy called Franco which is sort of the equivalent to uh, Hitler or Putin uh, or Mussolini and, um, yeah or Mussolini <laughs> right and and um, oh, yeah. and he didn't like uh, anything that didn't sound Spanish so he changed the name of Atletic to Atletico um, just to give the Spanish translation of, of the name. So um, in those years that we um, suffered the dictatorship, we were called Atletico Bilbao. Um, as soon as democracy came, uh, first thing we did was change the name back to Athletic Club, and that's, and that's how we like to be called. Um, 
we do understand that some people don't call us Athletic Club, they call us Bilbao. Um, it was uh, in the news, or oh, it was quite prominent uh, recently when we played Atletico Madrid in, in uh, La Copa del Rey. And um, Cholo Simeone um, really enjoyed calling us Bilbao, uh, knowing that we don't really like, we are actually hated. So when people say Bilbao, so, you know, you, you can say, you can call us Bilbao because you don't have the knowledge or, you know, that's how it's happened in your family. But if you, if you're a football person in the, in, the, in the Spanish league for as many years as Simeone, you should really know how the club is called. So he, he, he did it with uh, the intention of hurting us and um, we beat them in the cup. So we, we had last laugh. We, we, we beat them home and away. So that, that was a good um, uh, victory in the um, in the semi-finals. Absolutely, it's it's always fun to you know get the final laugh against Simeone, especially when you have to witness so many things on the sidelines. Uh, but yeah, Farouk, uh, do you want to take a stab at uh, the history of our club? I mean, uh, I'm always weak in our history, and you know I'm not the oldest person here. Uh, not neither are you. But would you like to take a stab at it? <laughs> No, nah, I think uh, I think you know that that's a discussion that can be have another time. But I think it's it's quite interesting, you know, the the history of just not the name of, of Bilbao and also the philosophy that they have. You know, I think Aito knows better, like about you know the fact that they only play players from you know the Basque region and stuff like that. And you know, it's a kind of a self-limiting, uh, I would say, approach. But we can see the success they've had, especially you know in in the cup. And you know, let's not forget, like even in the past, they've been you know to Europa League finals and stuff like that. So it's you know, it, it's a team that has a lot of you know very very strong uh success to back up the history albeit something unconventional but and something that seems that to work for them and yeah. they're very proud and, about it and um, you want to know why it happened uh, so the club was formed so bilbao um in those days was um very big on the industry like steel uh, ship building mining industry and all that industry was was uh, brought over by the british and it was the british who uh, when football started back in England in those days, they they got together to play football and they they would play football. Uh, every single player of the team were English, yeah, okay, and they were play English people who knew about the game, English people who had never played the game before. They would always win, uh, and they would say, you know, so you're cheating because you guys are English. We've never heard about this game. You like you know how to kick a ball. We don't, and then they say, okay. Fair enough. So from now on, we're only going to play with the Basque people, and we're going to still beat you. And that's how that's how it started. So, so yes, uh, that's that's how the philosophy started at the early, very early days of the club. And Mr. Pella, the name of our Peña, was the first um, coach, the first manager that we had. Oh wow! Okay. So, uh, ha has it always been easy to find a bowl of talent from Bilbao or just from other Basque uh, places, or um, have you guys struggled? Well, the, at the, simple, the simple answer is no. It hasn't been always easy. The, the, we have always been. Uh, maybe some people would argue otherwise, but we have always been the biggest club in the Basque country. Uh, so and the one with the most money. So we we've we've always been able to source players from the whole of the Basque country, which includes um, southern France. Um, but mainly, like 80, 90 percent of our players are homegrown. They they go through the football school in Lethama, and you know we always have to um, depend on the next generation of players. It could well be that nowadays we've got most of our players are homegrown and they are very talented and we have a good, very decent coach. But especially the years since we since we won the last um, trophy is last cup in um, 1984, and now we have been struggling, sometimes closer to the bottom than to the top. But um, but it's just the case of you know. Maybe uh, our um, our machine of, of our, our factory of players cannot produce a, a central midfielder or an attacker, or and then you struggle. We always tend to produce uh, extremely good goalkeepers. We have inundated the league of goalkeepers uh, brought in the farmer. But yeah, answering to your question, it hasn't always been easy. Um, we we have, you know, I remember 
I think maybe about uh, 20 years ago, that we were very, very close to relegation. I remember flying down to Santander, we were playing Rafin, and it was a mass win game, and we won 1 0. Uthait scored, and then we also played in La Coruña. But basically, two teams that are no longer in the top divisions. But uh, so it was like uh, we had to win like three games from the last four to stay up, and we managed to do that. But but usually we are we are sort of like um, top half of the table rather than bottom half. Okay, Farouk, uh, you seem to have a crazy lady uh, over in the background just laughing away. <laughs> Really, I actually didn't notice that. Okay, okay. Anyways, uh, I, I, there seems to be a little echo also. So when you're not speaking, you know, just uh, try to mute. But yeah, you're good. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, okay, Itore, let's, uh, you know, uh, enough with the history and stuff. Uh, let's get back to reality, you know. Uh, we, both of our teams have, you know, very important games coming up. This is probably just a warm-up before those games. Uh, so... In terms of your players, what, who are you expecting to actually uh, start and who are you actually expecting to rest? Okay, so, so um, that, that's a very good question. Okay, so if we start at goal, um, usually for the league, we play Unai Simon, and for the cup, uh, we play, oh God, uh, I forgot his name now. Um, uh, oh God, that, that's a, had a mental. Uh, happens. Um, let, let me. <laughs> he's going to. Um, so, um, so it's either Nice Simon uh, in the league and uh, Aguirre Balada plays in the cup. Um, but, so usually we'll play in Nice Simon on Sunday, but it has been a few cases where if we have a game just before the cup, just to give Aguirre Balada more minutes. Um, we, we play him instead. So I it could be one or the other. Mm. Uh, and then for, for, for the rest for the rest of the team, uh, some people were discussing, okay, well, do we want to give two weeks rest or three weeks rest after internationals to our key players? Um, or do we want them to play? Uh, and um, I think it would be a combination of both. I think all our key players need some game time, maybe except excepting the um, the ones that played with with Spain uh, last week. But um, at the same time, nobody wants to risk an injury before the biggest game of, of the season or possibly the biggest game in the last three years. So I assume that um, key players like uh, Nico or like Iñaki, um, may 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 uh, not play a full game so if they start they'll be uh, changed after one hour or if if they don't start they will just play the last 20 minutes or half an hour or something like that uh, i just wanted to touch upon unai simons uh, uh even in the international break the game against brazil uh, he had a brain fart and he bought, passed the ball right to rodrigo and rodrigo was able to pretty much tap it in uh, and we've been used to seeing a lot of mistakes from him in the national team. Is that the case with you guys too, or is he usually very dependable? Well, we, you know, you ask the athletic supporters, and most of them will say that he's our best player. Um, we do have, uh, we have two exceptionally good goalkeepers, and yes, anybody can have a brain fart, anybody can have a bad day at, at work one day, but um, you know, he may do that one mistake, but he's got. He's exceptionally good, good um, goalkeeper, and and people all over Europe are, are trying to to get to get um, to get him. But uh, so far, he's staying loyal to the club. Absolutely. So yes, yeah, mistakes can happen. Uh, still, we, we quite love him. Okay. Yeah. I mean, speaking about uh, other European clubs coming to get him. Uh, Nico Williams has, you know, set this uh, season on fire. Oh yeah. Uh, from I, I guess the difference is previous seasons he has shown uh, flashes of brilliance, but he hasn't really been productive. Uh, he's been pretty wasteful. But then this season, I think he has what nine, uh, ten assists in the league already, and uh, a few goals as well. Uh, so how has he actually improved? Uh, was that due to tactics or him just maturing? Um, I think he's just maturing, and I think the fact that he's he's playing with his brother 
um, helps him a lot. They have a good, very good connection. Sometimes um, Nico plays from the left and Inaki plays from the right, or they can change the other way around. Um, so he's he's played um, over 100 games for us, and he's still very young. He's only uh, 20, 22, 21 years old. Um, so um, he's got a very bright future ahead of him. Um, I think he's he's more like winger than a striker. So, um, and and yeah, I think he's got very good quality. He's got a fantastic speed. He can dribble, and he's got a very good cross, and he can score goals as well. So, so um, and and also his um, market price is something like fifty million, which for a player of his quality is 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 a pretty pretty good pretty good um, value for money. Um, he's scored so far six goals, six goals this season, and and twelve assists. So, oh. not not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. And uh, so, so I remember every time we face Athletic Club, uh, I've never been really afraid of uh, Inyaki Williams. And but this season has he actually uh, okay. impro improved his finishing because I know like he can get into those positions, but he's never managed to actually finish and you know hurt Real Madrid. He yeah, he sort of uh, blows hot and cold sometimes. Um, um, he he, I think he beat the record of the most successive games played for the club um he's been with us uh 10 seasons played over 400 games um and yeah he's one of those players that uh, misses easy goals and scores impossible goals this season it's been not bad for for him he's played 30 games he's scored 11 goals um with five assists um so you know, recently we have we have missed having a proper nine, proper striker, um, and Inyaki is doing better playing from the wing than, than playing as as a nine. Um, so maybe that's why a bit of a less responsibility is, is helping him a bit more. Absolutely. And Farouk, uh, I just wanted to ask. Uh, you know, the first time we faced up, uh, I guess in the first uh, leg of this La Liga campaign. Uh, we faced them in the first match of the season and it was such an easy game. Uh, we absolutely walked over them and that was such a strange yeah, thing to, to see. Yeah. yeah, it was such a strange thing to see. We've always uh, been used to such harsh and, you know, it's always a difficult game of football, but that was easy. Do you expect the same this time around? Yeah, and, and I think, you know, looking at the rest of the league, uh, this is possibly the hardest game that Real Madrid have to play. Uh, from now till the end, you um, still have to face Barcelona. Do you think uh, you guys are going to be more difficult than Barcelona? Uh, where are you playing them? Home or away? Uh, um, it's home. Home. Um, Barcelona have always also this. This hasn't been their season. They've been playing hot and cold. The manager has already resigned, um, and. Yeah, I think there's, there's too much pressure on them. Uh, I think teams like Real Madrid or Barcelona that you are expected to win every single game you play uh, and then you lose two games in a row and then it's crisis, you have to sack the coach and uh, nothing is working and the referees hate you. And um, So for, for us, that are sort of like in a more modest teams, um, we, um, you know, we win a game. Doesn't matter if if you won again against Cadiz or Villarreal or whoever, it's fantastic news. Um, it's not even when we are expected to win, we, we do celebrate with a, a good win. Okay. So I do I do feel for you that supporting Real Madrid, you know, all you always have to win, and if you don't win, it's, it's a big big disaster. We are happy when we win. We are also happy when we draw and when we lose. You know, we'll we'll still um, looking forward to the next game. Absolutely. A positive attitude, you know, uh, I, but most Real Madrid fans, including me, we don't have that. Uh, we just have to absolutely have to win <laughs> every single game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I guess just to wrap this up, uh, you know, Guru Seta for you has been immense this season. He's been very clinical in front of goal. Yeah, and... yeah. It, it is, you know, we, we had um, this other striker called um, Villa Libre, 
and and he was when he was playing for our second team um, in the lower division, he was scoring goals like nobody's business. And then he got promoted to the top team, and it's not quite the same. But Guruceta was very good when he was playing for our our big um, what we call Bilbao Athletic, our, our second team, and he's carrying on the form. Uh, playing for the first team so I'm not sure he's like he doesn't have the body of a proper number nine um, but you know if he gets good crosses from uh, the both Williams brothers or, or um, he will be he uh, well he's actually been pre being pretty good um, quite quite happy with with his uh, performance um, let me see how many goals uh, he's got yes, I'm just cheating here Probably uh, 16 or something? Uh, 15 goals, of course, for the club. So, yeah, yeah, not, not a bad season at all. Absolutely. And I, I think, don't think uh, previous years nobody went into double, double figures. Huh, yeah, uh, that speaks for itself, I guess. The biggest positive mm -hmm. I see out of this uh, form from Guruzeta is that, uh, you know, Williams, uh, Williams uh, both of the Williams brothers can play on the wing instead of, you know, forcing them to become a striker or something. Which I know yeah. Iñaki does not excel at. Yeah, and then we have we have just signed uh, this kid, um, 16, 17 year old kid, um, that is looks very promising. He played for uh, the Basque um, team for Euskadi, but the the uh, sort of national team uh, for the Basque region, and uh, and he scored, and and he's he's uh, he's uh, grew up. Playing football in the Basque country, then moved away to play in Portugal, I and mean, he's come back and looks like a very promising, very promising attacker. Yeah, there's definitely a chance for our defense to you know be leaky, and uh, there's reason to worry. But uh, before we head into the Real Madrid lineups, let's uh, take a quick ad break, and when we come back, we'll go through the lineups. Uh, you know, there are a few players missing, a couple of players coming back from injury and of course we'll do a bit of predictions as well and take it over Doris. wonderful Hola, Madridistas. Uh, i'm back once again to remind you guys that we partnered up with manscaped and uh, if you want to help and support this project and this little family of ours uh, be sure to check out manscaped and use code lbr20 at checkout for 20 percent off and free shipping so 2024 is in full swing we're already a month in and if you had any new year's resolutions to look better you know feel better uh, i have a company called manscape they're trusted by more than 10 million men worldwide and if you want to take a positive step you know in a good direction this year uh start with yourself and manscape asked us to introduce you guys to the new lawnmower fine Pro ultra uh it's a hair trimmer you know for your sensitive bits uh, it features skin safe technology you know to keep your sensitive bits safe it has an led bright it's waterproof you can use it in the shower you get two extra head uh, blade heads to uh, go either full smooth or a normal blade head um, if you want to go all in you can get the whole package you get a nose trimmer you get crop preserver it's a ball deodorant uh, you get some aftershave and in the box you also get some boxers and a bag you know to keep all of those things in um so yeah if you're interested go to uh, manscape.com use code lbr20 to get 20 percent off at checkout uh and free shipping that's lbr20 to get 20 percent off uh and free shipping at manscape.com and thank you guys uh and back to the video uh, we're back live Faruqi, were you about to say something? Yeah, I was actually going to ask Aitor. I was going to say, like, you actually touched upon the fact that, you know, uh, the, your, the history of your club with the, you know, the, 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 the Copa and all that. So I was just wondering, like, you guys are in a very, you know, unique position. Like, I mean, this is something that's not happened before in the past. Where, like, there's a possibility of having five teams in the UCL next year. And right now you guys are fourth. I think you guys are eight points or six points away from Barcelona in second. Yeah, so, like, there is yeah. a real possibility there for you guys to actually, you know, 
make the Champions League, you understand? I think, uh, so well, I don't like what... We, we are fourth at the moment. Uh, one yeah. more point that Atletico Madrid, who's fifth. Um, and then we are sort of two victories a game from Girona and eight points away from Barcelona. Um, anything can happen. Anything can happen. You know, it could well be that that we, you know, I think we've, we've only lost one game this season. I mean, not, not this season, uh, this year, uh, against Betis recently. Um, so we are in a good run. I think, like, if we don't lose against Real Madrid, if, if we win the Cup, we'll just take that form to the rest of the season and then we can do well. Unless, obviously, we get completely drunk celebrating the, the Cup and then we don't <laughs> win any, any more games. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm sure that Valverde will, will sort of try and motivate the, the guys whether we win or we lose the cup, um, and just try and make, make that fourth spot ours, or even third. The Girona is now in the downward trend, so they, they think they lost the last three games. I think they did. Uh, so, so uh, if they keep on that trend, you know, we'll catch them in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. Yeah, actually, that that was actually the next question I was going to post to you is that you know. If like a team of your stature, you know, the point is that when you win, if you guys are able to, you know, get over the line and win the Copa, you know, like, can that kind of be like a sort of motivation or a boss killer such that they'd be like, ah, oh, we've done our part and like, you know, even the Europa League. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I think when when you used to win in every, every week, you carry on that form. Um, I think if we were to lose the cup, I think that could be... Uh, main psychological shock. I think I think we should be like very strong favorites against Mallorca. Uh, we've got um, thousands of supporters, including myself, going to Seville without a ticket just for the chance of supporting the team somehow. Um, so yeah, I think losing the cup. Um, I'm going to touch wood. Uh, could be um, yes. Uh, Jekyll and Hyde moment for us and, and then from then on we could just go in a downward spiral um but let's let's see how it goes let's take one game at a time let's talk about real madrid first and then and then we'll see we'll see what 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 next week brings yeah but then that brings that begs the question now you actually mentioned a very good thing you know it's about the run of form right so like now you have a big game you understand which is a basically a final and then you have a game against real madrid as well so like I don't I kind of feel like it's like you know you weigh the pros and the cons and you kind of feel like okay which is the you know the lesser of the two evils I don't know what do you think of how the well if if, if you if you if you say okay you can only win one game you can only win this week or next week I'd say hundred percent next week Real Madrid can get the three points I'll we'll wrap it in a bow there you go three points for you let us win next week um, that's that is. Um, that is definitely yeah, but we I think we will be we will aim at next week better with um, getting something out of the Bernabeu than with a bad defeat. So we'll, we'll be we'll, we'll be in better spirits. What about you, Jacob? What do you think? Because we also have the whole you know almighty game uh, that the, you know after this game. So I don't know what's 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 your take about that at all. I think we have time, enough time to recover from this game uh, and in time for Man City. So I'm going to be watching for our strongest lineups, uh, the maximum effort, uh, so that we can get into gear, especially after a bit of break. We don't want to lose our momentum uh, that we've built all season just by giving the players rest or by taking it easy. So definitely go full throttle, uh, put in a convincing performance so that we can be confident for the City game. Yeah. yeah, I think that, that that makes a lot of sense. And actually, you know, back to the question you were asking me earlier about, you know, the first game of the season, maybe I should also will attend to that, was that it was a really shocking game because, you know, Real Madrid didn't play literally and we won the game. It not We didn't win because we did anything. We won because literally, like, you know, Bilbao were nowhere to be found. It was quite surprising because I know always when we go to the San Mames, it's always, you know, a very, very daunting task. So uh, the first game was quite, you know, strange for me as, uh, you know, Because of the form they're in right now, the position they find themselves in the league, I think it's going to be much more uh, a much more tightly contested game. And 
I think they're going to bring the game as well as HR saying like getting a point or even you know a draw or three points from 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 the Bernabeu is the perfect you know boost that they require before their final. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. I guess uh, let's uh, talk about the Real Madrid lineups. You know, uh, I'm going to lay it out the facts. Uh, Kamavinga. Uh, he had a minor ankle sprain, but he's expected to be back for the game. Uh, Jude Bellingham is back from his uh, suspension. But of course, when we get one, we have to lose one. Vinicius is out, uh, suspended from his uh, you know, antics over at the Osasuna game. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess that leaves. Uh, we also have a couple of uh, returnees from long-term injuries. Uh, so Militao is back. Courtois is expected to be back in the lineup as well. Not in the, I mean, in the squad, but not the lineup. So... Farouk, take it away, man. Uh, I feel like you can probably guess half of our team. I'm s- Courtois is expected to be back in the squad. Isn't that still far away, though? Uh, no. Uh, so Ancelotti said both uh, Militao and uh, Courtois, they're expected to be back after the international break. Uh, but yeah, we have to see the squad that's going to be listed soon uh, for the confirmation. Okay, that's 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 great because I remember like we had the situation where Chibu was injured for I think was it six weeks, seven weeks, something like that. Wow, time has flown in, in, indeed. Or anyways, uh, anyways, the thing is, uh, I think for this game, it's not a game that anyways you can count on Chibu for. And uh, I think you know that 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 break that you mentioned that the time that we have between this game and the next game is going to be crucial to see you know how Chibu responds or doesn't respond. I think the more interesting option would be what happens with you know Militao, honestly, because I think that that might be a more you know. Uh, that might be something more because like, I feel like maybe Chibu might be back in some shape or form, but uh, do you want to throw Militao into the deep end after he's been out for, uh, what, six months, eight months, you know, against arguably the, you know, best offensive machine you have in Europe. So that's something that's left, you know, open for debates. But yeah, as you said, you know, like the, the, the lineup basically picks itself. It's like, you know, we know Andre Lunin is going to be there. There is no, you know, a, a doubt about that. And I think also we should see Carval as well. Uh, if everything goes well, I think also Mendy should be on the on the left side as well. So I think the question now becomes, how does the centre back pairing look like? So I don't know if you have any opinion on that or. Yeah, I just wanted to. I know this is not the Man City preview, but I want to touch up upon it. Uh, so we, we know Nacho hasn't been the greatest this season. Uh, we have to face off against the likes of Haaland and whatnot. Uh, so would this be the time to actually start Chomini at uh, uh, centre back and? go with that lineup because if we do that we can actually fit in Kamavinga when Man City comes and uh, that's my thinking uh, what do you think uh, I think it's I will still go with Nacho because I feel like you get that flexibility of having the ability to change the game you get like so like when you have Kamavinga on the bench it's you know it can be like your your ace card basically so like if you see the first half you know like the first 30 40 minutes hasn't gone according to you know what you expect so you know you can always have that case at halftime and just you know Put push push to Armeni a bit deeper and you know bring on Kamavinga or something like that. I you know that's that's the thing. I feel like uh, it might be important to have Kamavinga as an option in this game because I feel he has the ability to change the game and not just even that. Maybe it works with maybe it works out even with Nacho, but it doesn't work well with Mendy. You know, so you have that option of you also like taking out Mendy and bringing on uh, Kamavinga as well. So I feel like uh, having him as an option is something that's it's it's going to be really, really interesting. Yeah, uh, that's certainly. A really good option that we've always used in the past as well. Bringing Kamavinga on, replace Mendy, you know, get our attacks going. Um, but yeah, I'm just worried about the form of Nacho, man. Uh, and if we have to face off against like a huge guy like Haaland, uh, he's certainly going to help. But yeah, let's... let's. Uh, yeah, well, that, that's the thing actually, you know, like while I understand the, what your fear actually like uh, in the lead up to the game, I've always just, you know, been of the idea that, you know, Nacho has always shown up when he has been needed, you understand? So I kind of feel like, yeah, of course, his form is not the greatest, honestly, so far, but uh, I do feel like, you know, going on the past history, you know, when he has been called upon in tight situations and really important moments, like, you know, he has really stepped up. And I want to count on that as well again, you know, because there is no bigger game for Leo Madrid than the Champions League. So I believe that, you know, that that Antium will uh, reawaken something in him. Absolutely. I guess, uh, so when we look at the midfield, uh, it's going to be Chao Mani. Uh... Valverde, Cruz, and Bellingham are strongest midfield this season. Yeah, I think that's just it. I think there, there is, there is no, uh, there is nothing to add or subtract there because yeah, this, this, these are the guys. And as you said, you know, like we want to, you know, get that rhythm going again. So you just put the best eleven you have out there, and you know, make sure that they, they, they're back to their best. Absolutely. I saw Bellingham playing for England against um, 
well, both against Brazil and, and then Belgium um, in, the, in the last few days. Uh, he had a really very good game against Belgium. He scored, he scored equalizer in the end. So, yeah, he did well. Good play. You've got, you've got, I think possibly you've got the best player going around in the, the world with Bellingham now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if he can actually go for a deep run in the Champions League, win La Liga, you know, uh, he, and he does well in the Euros, he has a shout out for, you know, the Ballon d'Or standings at least. From what I hear, he's a very nice guy as well. He's the best. He was, you know, they were, they were um, in the sort of like, when they go into the into the pit uh, and they go with all the mascots, uh, very heavy rain in London. So I'm bending and took his coat off and gave it to the little boy ahead of him and said, oh, you know, just coat off from the rain, lad, you know, I'm going to get wet anyway. Yeah, no, good, 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 good chap, good chap. Absolutely. Let's let's see if, if Guardiola doesn't sneak it away from you in the next couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think he's leaving. Uh, that would be a shock for everyone. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I guess uh, just to wrap up our lineups, um, Vinicius is going to be missing. It's def Rodrigo definitely has to start. Uh, who's going to be up top with him, uh, Farouk? Is it going to be Jose Lu uh, as a surprise start, or probably the usual Brahim? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's going to be uh, Diaz as well. I think it's going to be Brian Diaz. You know, it's a home game. I think so. If you want to have that, you know, fluidity, that's that's that Brian gives you that combination that Brian gives you. And I think as we've spoken in the past, like you know, I feel like Brian works best when he plays with either of them, not the both of them. So I think we're going to see, you know, again, uh, uh, some really good performance. And I think like Brian has just put himself in that position that when someone is out, he's the next option. You know, honestly, Osilo has been good. Like, let's not take that away. Like, he's got. Uh, a uh, significant amount of goals. Like, I think 15 goals or how many is it? I can't remember how many goals he has in total. But anyways, like he's 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 he's, he's done his part as well. But I just think like you know Diaz is, is gonna get the nod out of 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 Ocelo with this game. Fair enough. Yeah, uh, I can't uh, say anything else. Um, the thing is, maybe for this game, uh, I know Athletic Club they aren't like the strongest de in defense. So I think maybe just a really early showing from Hosello if he can't manage to score until then is gonna really help us. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's actually quite true as well. That's true, you know. So it's something as well. But actually, I feel like also like you know we want to get as much people into the form. You know, we want to get as much people running and going against City because we never can know how the game will turn against City, and you need to have you know the different outlets. And that's the good thing we have, you know. The, the, the difference we have right now is that okay that, yeah like Brahim is not the world beater or like Osilo is not the best out there but like they give us uh, the different options you know like when Brahim is there he gives you stuff that you do not get from either Rodrigo or Bini and like but yeah of course we know that Osilo is the only natural number nine in the team so that even makes it even much more you know uh better in terms of the difference in the up in what you get from the players just so it's a question of the quality you get so you know if we can have a party at the Bernabeu at the weekend I think it's going to be really great to you know to have all the players you know in, in, in good spirits before we, we go to the game. Hundred percent. Um it already like do you want to actually run us through your lineups quickly? Okay. Um so I'm gonna say for goal we're possibly gonna go with Unai Simon. Although I wouldn't be surprised if we find Agritabala instead. Uh, yes for him to have some practice before the cup next week. Um central defenders possibly Yerai and Vivian. Although Vivian played for Spain the other day, I'm not sure whether he could have knock. Uh, so, um, fullbacks in the wings, uh, Leque on the left and the Marcos on the right. Uh, I think Yuri is, is um, he's got a bit of an injury at the moment. Um, sort of the, the two ahead of the defense, possibly uh, Ruiz de Galarreta and Prados. Uh, they're both very young players. Um, but uh, we've got Ander Herrera injured. Um, you know, so with um, he would um, try and put um, this guy in there. There's a chance to have a, a more experienced player playing against a club like Real Madrid. But I'm going to go for Gabriel and Prados there uh, as the two holding fielders, and um, ahead of them, Sunset in the middle. And sort of um, left wing, Nico Williams, right wing, Inaki Williams, and Guruceta as the lone striker. That's, you know, that's usually the 
lineup that we normally have. I know we've got a couple of people like Yuri um, injured. Um, but yeah, so I think that's, that's the possibly the lineup that he'll start with. And then if we're, if we're still in the game after one hour, he could um, just see how it goes. But if, if, if we had two goals down after, after 20 minutes, he will probably take the Williams brothers off and say, okay, well, let's have a rest. Let's, let's get ready for next week. Yep, totally understandable. Uh, I guess uh, that uh, wraps it up for this preview. But yeah, let's uh, do predictions, guys. Uh, let's go with you, Itore. What do you think the scoreline is going to be? Uh, let's have a, a prediction um, for the, the cup final as well, seeing as that's relevant. <laughs> okay. Um, right. So so this Sunday, I'm going to go for 1 0. Happy with that. Take hands. Good for both. Um, nobody wants a disaster. Uh, and now for next week in the final. Well, you know, I've been to three finals. I've seen them lose all three finals. Um, Are you going to this final? Been... Pardon? Are you going to this final Again? as well? I am. I am. Well, I don't have a ticket yet. Uh, but um, if I'm, I'm traveling to, I'm going, I'm flying to Seville from London uh, just to be there. And if I've got a chance of getting uh, tickets for the final, uh, I will. But so far, I'm going, but without a ticket. And um, so for the final, I'm just going to say 2-0 of the dick against Mallorca. Yeah, definitely a safe prediction. Farouk, let's go with you, man. Next. Yeah, I totally agree with Eto for the 2-0 victory for Athletic against Mallorca. But I think it's 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 going to be, you know, a, ch- a chastening game again. At, real, uh, at the Bernabeu, I think uh, we're going to go for the 3-1 victory for Real Madrid. 3-1, yeah. Uh, do you think Rodrigo is actually going to score? He scored against Spain. He broke his goal-scoring drought. Yeah, I hope so. I hope for our sakes. I really do hope you know Rodrigo gets uh, back in goal-scoring form. I hope we can you know get him there. And I think with the absence of Vinicius, also you know increase the responsibilities and also reduces that because one thing we've seen is that Rodrigo is trying so hard to be a facilitator for the team as well. You know, so I think that the absence of Vinicius makes means that he is the one who has to you know be facilitated for so basically he's going to be the one on the receiving end of a lot of things so i i hope that you know that will help him break his you know his deadlock absolutely same um i think it's going to be a bit more of a close victory for us um uh, maybe a one nil uh, i feel like the defense uh, are really going to show up be serious because you know they have to have a put- good performance if uh, they face off against man city so one nil victory for me and the winner is going to be scored by bellingham He's going to be back and he's going to be scoring. Oh. Great, this is great, great, great. So when are you going to have the stadium finished? Uh, sorry? Bernabeu, when is it going to be finished? <laughs> um, I think it's, it should be done in the summer, but actually, you know, there's always delays with the construction mm-hmm. issues and all that. But you I know, give it you know, because... We, we built a new stadium, then it was Russell to that building the stadium. Now you guys build the stadium, then Barcelona built their own stadium. <laughs> we started the trend of modern <laughs> stadiums. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be completed pretty soon because we're going to be hosting Taylor Swift. Uh, there are a couple more concerts also planned in the summer. Okay. So it's going to be finished quite fast. Uh, and Ito, uh, have you actually been to the Bernabeu? Uh, and how was your experience? I have, yes. Uh, many, many years ago, I think maybe about 25 years ago, that's how old I am. Um, <laughs> and and um, obviously, you know, when you go there with your bad flag and the Madrid supporters go there with the Spanish flag, it's always, there's always a bit of, um, I mean, it's, polit- it's not just sport, rivalry, it's, it's also political as well. Um, but I have been better treated in Real Madrid than in Atletico Madrid or than in uh, Radim Santander or some other uh, grounds around Spain. And, and I think even though uh, sort of uh, we are the opposite of the political spectrum, there's always been some kind of respect between both clubs. We had a number of players from Athletic that went to Real Madrid um, like I thought, my name is like I thought Caranca or Rafael Gorta, or now you've got uh, one of our previous goalkeepers, and um, and there's always been some, some you know, there's, there's two senior clubs that don't 
don't go bullshitting around. They are they, they know they are professional. They know how to run a club, and um, so back to your question. My experience was yes, it's a big stadium. It still was the biggest stadium before um, all, all the works that are going on now, and um, nice, impressive in the middle of the city, uh, which is quite unusual nowadays, um, and. Um, yeah, so I have been treated uh, fairly, I don't know, I have to say. I, I don't think I could say the same thing about your neighbors from Atletico. You never. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, man, it's really good to know uh, the people of Madrid are welcoming, uh, to, you know, uh, visiting fans. With that, uh, let's wrap this up. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on. Um, and we're going to be having the links to the Peña and whatnot, uh, even I thought, uh, socials as well, once we get that. Uh, so look, check check out those uh, links, guys. And you know, if you want to actually join, uh, you know, you don't even have to speak uh, Basque. Uh, you you're free to join the Peña uh, if you're interested. Anyways, and uh, thanks to our partners over at Trail Madrid Committee as well for their awesome support. And check out our uh, clips out on Instagram. So we're gonna be hosting them at the Bernabeu, and Sid is gonna be right outside the Bernabeu asking the fans questions on what happened in the game. And with that, uh, let's, you know what to say, Farouk. Hello, Madrid. Hello, Madrid. A pathetic. <laughs> <laughs>